Hey guys, Chad Trades here. So in this video, I want to go over my bread and butter setup. This is the setup that has the highest win rate for me. It's the one I'm most confident in. And I think it's just one of the easiest setups to trade as a beginner. And this is using supply and demand. And what I want to go over first is how to find high probability supply and demand zones. So how do you actually find these zones that you can actually take trades on, right? So first we're going to talk about where to take the trades and then we'll talk about when to take the trade. So the zones that we mark on our chart is where and then our entry confirmations, what tells us to get in that will actually bounce off that zone is when we get into the trade. Okay, so first let's go over where we get in the trade and this is going to be those supply and demand zones. So there's a couple things you want to look for when it comes to finding these zones and marking them on your own charts. Keep in mind this works for pretty much any chart. I mainly trade the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So this is what I use it for. So what I like to do is I like to use the one hour time frame, okay, for marking these zones. I like to see periods where we had consolidation. And after that consolidation, I want to see aggressive buying or selling. Aggressive buying creates demand, aggressive selling creates supply, right? And then I wanna see new lows or new highs after we have that aggressive buying slash selling. Now we can see that we're on the S&P 500 and we have a clear demand zone down here. So the highest probability trades are gonna be down in this area. If you take trades in the middle of these two zones, right? So obviously we have our resistance or supply zone up here. If you take trades in the middle of these zones, it's gonna be way more risky and the probability is gonna be much lower that you're gonna actually take a winning trade, right? Because as you can see, we've mainly been chopping around um, in these two zones. And every time we went near the zones, right? The closer we got to the zones, the higher probability the trade will actually bounce off of it, right? If you get those entry confirmations. So anyways, how do we actually find these zones? Well, like I said, what I like to do is I like to first go on the one hour time frame. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the one hour time frame. And as you can see, I have all my zones marked over the past few weeks. Now, the first zone up here, we can see um, this is a supply zone. Now, going back to our checklist, right? The first thing we wanna see is consolidation. And this is a supply zone. So we wanna, we wanna see aggressive selling and ideally make new lows from that aggressive selling. Okay, so first thing we see here is we have consolidation. It consolidated all night. The next step on our list, we had aggressive selling, right? Very aggressive selling. And the third thing is we actually made new lows. Okay, so not only did we have aggressive selling, but we made new lows from this previous low. Okay, this creates a very key supply zone that once we get back up here, you know, we eventually will test this area. Um, it could be the next month, it could be the next week, it could be in three months from now, we don't really know, but this should act as resistance, right? This will give us an idea of where we can take a trade on this strategy. Okay, going over to our next zone, as you can see, this is another supply zone. The reason I have this mark, not only was this old support, right? Once we tested it up again, as you can see this, as you can see this old support, which we got from here, right? We had aggressive buying off the support consolidation, right? Once we broke it, now it's acting as new resistance, right? What happened when we got in the zone? We consolidated in this zone for a little bit. And then what happened? We had aggressive selling and we made new lows from this previous low down here, right? We had super aggressive selling on that day. Okay, then this area was originally a demand zone. I did erase this uh, today since it got broken this morning from inflation data. But yesterday you can see on my chart, I had this zone basically drawn out. So we had consolidation right? We had consolidation throughout this area and then we had aggressive buying off of it. When we came in yesterday, as you can see, price bounced not perfectly on the zone, but it mounts near it, right? And that's all we need. The closer we get to the zone, the higher probability the trade will actually work, okay? So it doesn't have to be perfect. This is why it's called a zone. It's not an exact price. Um, it'll never be an exact price. You just wanna make sure your zone hits the very lows and then goes up to where we had you know, aggressive buying, right? So basically right here, if we just zoom into the chart a little bit, we pretty much had aggressive buying off of right here. Um, so we pretty much hit this zone exactly. Now, sometimes this is hard to tell exactly where we had the aggressive selling on the, on the one hour chart. So you can go into the five minute chart just to give you a little bit more detail. So for example, if I go into the five minute and we zoom in to where we just drew the zone, right? We can see uh, pretty much on this candles where we started having the aggressive buying. And this is where that zone comes up to. As you can see yesterday, um, right here, 
we tested this zone exactly and started bouncing off of it. So every single morning, what I do is I'll update my charts with the new zones based on what price action did overnight, the day before, right, etc. So as you can see, if I come over to my Discord community, I have a section labeled trading plan. Okay, so inside this plan, I share where I have my key levels, my supply and demand zones, every single morning on the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, right? So we can see this morning, we have this demand zone um, near this 5180, and we had resistance near 210, okay? Um, you can see I also say 5180 support area and 5210 resistance area, right? So I basically draw and update these zones every single day before the market opens. So if drawing zones is kind of confusing to you guys and you guys want to just see my zones every single day, this Discord group is completely free and open to the public. If you guys want to join it and see my levels every single day on the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, we'd love to have you inside of here. All you have to do to join us is click on the first link in the description below this video. Okay, so that is how you find high probability supply and demand zones. The next thing you're going to need to do is once you know where to enter a trade, right, off one of those zones, the next thing you need to do is look for entry confirmations. Now, like I said, what entry confirmations will do is it's gonna tell you when to enter the trade when we're in that zone. So there's two different ways I like to use entry confirmations. Um, the first way is you can just look for five minute reversal candles. The second way is you can look for one minute um, or even five minute Heikinoshi candles. Now to show you an example of that, as you can see, I'm on the five minute time frame. This is a trade I did take last week where we had a demand zone down here, right? This demand zone got created from pre-market and the prior day. Um, this got broken through since then. But as you can see, this zone was acting as support pretty much all day. Uh, we first bounced off it right here. Now, since we didn't see any reversal candles, I couldn't really enter this trade. Um, I didn't have the right entry confirmations for the setup I was following, which is you know using reversal candles. Now, the second time we entered it, as we can see, we saw a clear five minute reversal candle. We saw a little bit of elevated volume here telling us buyers were starting to step in. Um, as you can see, we came down here, we tested the lows and buyers bought this up and closed this towards the top. So once this candle closed at 292, I was able to enter this trade and ride it up to this VWAP area, snagging a quick seven, eight points on ES. Now we can also go on a day like today. This is April 10th, 2024. As you can see inside my Discord, I posted on ES that I was watching 5185 to 5175 area as our demand zone. Now, if we go back on the chart, as you can see, this is that zone I have drawn right here, right? I've had it drawn since before the market even opened. Now, what you'll notice here is a day like today, what I could have done is basically just set an alert and told myself, hey, I'm not gonna take any trades until we get near this zone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set an alert. So I'm gonna say if we're below 5189, um, this is going to tell me that I can start looking for trades somewhere in this area where we start getting close to the zone. Now, as you can see, that didn't really happen for a while, but eventually we got down here. And what you'll notice here is once we actually got down here and I you know, came to my computer because I got that alert that we're at a high probability area where price can bounce. As you can see, there was no reversal candles, right? And sometimes this will happen where we don't get those nice looking five minute reversal candles with a long wick with elevated volume. And sometimes those won't happen. So another strategy I like to use if we are not getting those five minute reversal candles on a day like today, what I like to do if I go back to our sheet is I like to switch it over to the Heikinoshi candles. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move myself real quick and I'm just gonna go over to style and I'm gonna change the candles to Heikinoshi. All right, so Heikinoshi candles are different kind of candles that basically just average the past couple candles or so. They also factor in volume. As you can see, basically what you want to look for in Heikinoshi candles, instead of a reversal looking candle, you wanna see a big green candle like this, okay? So this gold is actually a green candle. You wanna see no bottom wick, you wanna see a big body, okay? So you wanna see some kind of candle like this. Now keep in mind, by the time this candle closed, we're already way up here, and now our risk reward is kinda of screwed up. So you can use the Heikinoshi candles on the five minute time frame, as you can see. Um, you just have to put your stop below the lows, so you will have to risk a little bit more points when it comes to using the Heikinoshi candles on the five minute time frame. We'd still be in this trade at this moment. Uh, we'd be down a little bit since we're trading right here, but I think this trade will probably eventually play out. Again, we just put our stop below the lows if we are using Heikinoshi candles. But another thing you can do is you can go over to the one minute time frame. okay? 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the one minute time frame, And as you can see, if I zoom into the chart here, and this is actually the trade I took today. Once we came into the zone, and I saw this first big green Heikinashi candle, had no bottom wick, had a big body, had elevated volume. Right, I was able to get into the trade right here at 51.90. I was able to ride this thing all the way to our resistance area that also lined up with VWAP, which basically made me around 17 points on ES. So you can see this is the trade I actually took. I traded five contracts of ES and I got in right here at 51.89. Okay, enter five contracts. I trimmed a little bit here and then trimmed again once we reached new highs up at 52.15 area. Now, one thing I do wanna warn you if you're using these one minute Heikinashi candles, a lot of times these will get faked out, okay? Um, they'll get faked out a lot more if you're using the one minute time frame. So as you can see, if we go back to the chart, um, let's say you got in here, right? You saw this Heikinashi candle had a big body, no bottom wick, right? Again, if you would have taken this, this got faked out. This trade actually would have worked as long as you kept your stop below the lows. But a lot of times they will get faked out. So what could have happened on this trade, I don't know, maybe this will happen a different day where we saw a nice looking one minute Heikinashi candle, but then all of a sudden we go lower and we dip into the zone even lower. And keep in mind, we're still in the zone, right? So we could still go up, but we had to stop out of the trade because it broke the lows. So this is where I add in another confirmation if I'm going to use the one minute time frame. okay? This is absolutely mandatory for me if I'm gonna use the one minute time frame because I'll tell you what, I've gotten faked out plenty of times where we look like we're bouncing off our high probability zone and then we pulled back deeper into the zone, I got stopped out and then the trade ended up playing out in my favor and then I missed the whole entire trade, right? And I was stuck with a loss. So another confirmation that I like to add in, and again, this is only if I'm using the one minute time frame. If it's a reversal five minute candle, this confirmation isn't really mandatory for me, but it does act as extra confirmation, is I use level two orders to confirm my entry. Okay, and I do this on a software called Bookmap, where basically it just shows a heat map of all the limit orders, okay? So the reason why I was able to enter here and I knew that there's a high chance that we would actually bounce off this level and we wouldn't break this low again where I would get stopped out, right? Is because I was using the level two orders as an extra confirmation for my entry on that one minute time frame. All right, so going back into the chart, as you can see, this is the one minute time frame. Once we came down into this level, this is actually where I took the trade, right? Once we got into this level finally, um, I got in like right here at 11.14 and rode this thing up to VWAP, right? Now, the way I'm using book map or level two orders to actually confirm that, if I am gonna use the one minute time frame, right, is again, I go into software called book map and this basically shows a heat map of price action. As you can see, all the bubble orders, these are market orders. And then anything on the heat map are limit orders, right? These are orders waiting down here, uh, basically just waiting to get filled. Okay, so as you can see, when we're coming down here at 11.06, okay, so if I go back to the chart, uh, 11.06 is right here. So 11.06 is right here. We're getting near the zone. This is where I had my alert go off telling me that we're gonna have a possible bounce down here, right? Now I'm looking for confirmation. So the way I can look for confirmation on here is we can see this on the heat map, right? The dark red, the dark orange, the yellow orders, these are all big orders waiting to get filled. We can actually see it on the level two. We had 347 orders. So from what I've noticed, anything above 300 on ES will really start to stick out. Um, kind of depends on the day and the volume, but usually anything over 300 is orders that will really stick out. And that's typically the number I like to look for is we have to see at least over 300 orders. As you can see, big sellers came in, they put a bunch of effort to sell and they got no reward, right? What happened once they put in all this effort, right? Price started bouncing up, right? And once the price started bouncing up, this is where I can go back to my system i am like, okay, now I'm just waiting for a confirmation candle, right? I can see there's clearly a bunch of orders sitting down here. You know, big sellers are trying to push this thing down and they're getting no reward. So what happens when sellers put in a bunch of effort and they get no reward? Price reverses. And we can see that with all the orders sitting down here at 180 on book map. So I can go back to the chart. Now I can either wait for a green normal candle um, or you can switch it over to a Heikinashi candle. This is typically what I like to use more. So I just switch over to a Heikinashi, wait for a nice looking green candle like this one right here. We had elevated volume on it. 
I get in right here, I can put my stop below the lows, and I could ride this thing up to my target, which was this resistance slash VWAP area. So anyways, that is how I'm using the level two orders and book map to actually have extra confirmation if you're gonna use those one minute candles, or you can just use reversal candles if you're okay with taking a little bit less trades, right? So anyways, guys, that is my favorite setup I like to use when it comes to my supply and demand trading strategy. Again, what's really nice about this strategy is when we're in the middle of the two zones, we can kind of just sit on our hands, go do something else, set an alert. So for example, if I get up here again, right, I can set an alert and I can walk away until we're above this area and I can get alerted on my phone. Or if we come down here again, right, into the zone, I can set an alert and I can walk away until we're in or near this area, right? Everything in between is basically just fluff. We want to ignore it and stay away. So anyways, guys, hope this video was helpful. Like I said before, if you have a hard time coming up with these supply and demand zones, you don't really understand how to mark them, be sure to join our free Discord community. Like I said, I post my levels every single day for ES and the NASDAQ market. We also have a community with over 7,000 traders that you can ask questions and network with in here as well. So anyways, if you do wanna join the community, we'd love to have you inside. All you have to do is go to the first link in the description below or just head over to this link right here to get completely free access. But that being said, guys, as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video with another day trading lesson.